This video is brought to you by Apex Gaming PCs. If you're interested in getting into DCS, don't forget to check out Apex Gaming PCs. This is where I got my laptop. It's a great place to customize your own build with your own budget. Now available with Afirm so you can pay as you go and it doesn't hurt your wallet. Alright guys, don't forget to check out Apex Gaming PCs. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're here in the FAT Hornet. We're taking on the Mirage 2000. Uh, basically two very good one circle fighters big thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far and liked the videos really love you guys appreciate the support now we are going into the merge here against the mirage as i said which means we're gonna have to find a way to take a two circle and i'll explain that in a little bit but basically right now we're going to the merge and it looks like he did a split s so i'm gonna go for the vertical So I'm sure many of you are aware, both of these aircraft are extremely good one circle fighters. It's just that I think the Mirage is a little bit better in the one circle. And you know, it also dumps speed a lot better than the, than the Hornet. Um, he might get nose on here, we're gonna avoid that. You can see he tried to point his nose at me there. And also, not only am I really good in the one circle, and so is he, I'm just so much better in a two circle in the Hornet, right? So why wouldn't I use that advantage against the Mirage? Um, he is back here somewhere. Oh, did he just shoot at me as he went by there? I think he did. Now with all things, if you can keep it two circle, if you can stiff arm your bandit into fighting your fight, then he should never be able to kill you. No matter how good he is, right? That's the theoretical idea. Uh, he just shot at me again there. I'm gonna use... Yeah, we use the G-limiter there to not hit the ground, uh, but we won't be using it during the actual fight, so. Um, and I think the G-limiter in real life on a Hornet has only been used one time in real life, and it was to stop the Hornet from hitting the ground, so. I just did the same thing. <laughs> and he might actually get his nose on here if he shoots a little bit too slow to jink there, and I think we got hit. I did, I believe, get hit there, but the good news is I have him on the deck now and I survived whatever he shot at me there by some miracle. Quite honestly, I think I should be dead, but uh, we're alive. And I got him locked and I'm going to pull him into the HUD here, see if we can take a shot at him. He's super slow too. Right, right. Woof! <laughs> Just mag dumped on him. Oh, and he crashes into a field, luckily. I thought he was going to hit somebody's house there. All right, splash one mirage. Tables turned quick there. So this whole Hornet Mirage fight is a really good example of how sometimes, based on your bandit, you will choose a fight that isn't necessarily what your aircraft is best at. Uh, the Hornet being a one circle fighter 90% of the time in this fight is going to opt for the two circle against the Mirage. So you can see what kind of fight you pick is really dependent on your bandit more so than your own aircraft. There are some exceptions to that. The F-16, for example, is always, always going to be a two circle fighter. Okay, he's going to use a little bit of the vertical here. So the fact that he used the vertical like that and I didn't follow that, that's going to make him offensive here on his way down, which you can see is basically what's happening. He's got nose on and he's definitely offensive. Uh, now, theoretically, I should be able to outrate him and, you know, keep him far enough away that he won't be able to take shots at me. 
The Mirage, luckily, is an aircraft that's very hard to get rounds on target. It's firing dual 30 millimeters, which means those rounds are super heavy. He needs to come close to me in order to get those on target, uh, you know, reliably. And on top of that, his gun sight's not the best. Yeah, it's really not a good gun sight, in my opinion. Yeah, you can get used to it, and you might be able to do pretty well, but even then, you got to get pretty close. So, uh, now, here he is. He's really dumping that nose, trying to stay with me. And I might have my nose a little too dumped here. We're picking up a lot of speed, Altitude. and that's a big mistake Altitude. on my part. Look at him trying to point his nose at me. He's too far. He can't keep this up. For sure, he's going to have to stop pointing his nose at me. There it goes. There he goes. He tried to scare me there, but that really is going to create a situation where he lost a lot of speed, and now he's super slow on the deck. That's exactly what I'm looking for to cash in my energy here and try to take that kill. I could fox to him there, but uh, of course I won't. And we're going to get a little bit of the altitude advantage we're looking for. Oh, a little bit of an FPS drop there. I apologize for that. Uh, luckily, I still have him here. I didn't lose him. And he's going to see me pulling the nose around. He jinx. And he goes high. He jinx high. He's getting slow. I got to get the kill before he gets me to overshoot. Oh, he's trying to nose counter. Come on. Come on. Yes, Hornet. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. He's definitely dead, right? Yeah. Oh, again, into somebody's field. That's good, though. It's better than crashing on top of one of those guys' roof. Alright, so you can see as long as the Hornet can stiff arm the Mirage into that two circle fight, there really shouldn't be too much the Mirage can do against it. it. Constantly, it seems the two circle fight really is superior to the one circle, assuming that you can keep it there. And remember, one of the conditions of keeping him in a two circle fight is you need to have speed. You can't end up slow. You don't want to be in a two circle and just be like 150 knots. That's dumb too. He's going to kill you if you do that. I would say try to keep the Mirage minimum above 300 but even that's a little slow i like to keep it right at the rate speeds of 350 into the merge here and he's going to use vertical again i'm going to slice up with him just to not while well, he's still going to become offensive pretty quickly it's because he can dump all of that speed and come back around there's those rounds not good. Not good. Jinked low on that one, but it kind of dumps my nose. I'm dumping the nose way too much. Look at this, 540 knots. I really screwed this one up. But uh, because I dumped the nose like that, it opened up angles for him. And he's offensive sitting on my six, but here's the thing. He's inside my circle, which can be dangerous. As you can see, his rounds are short, but close. And one of the things that's keeping me alive here is the speed, right? You can see those rounds are actually pretty decent. So I do have to slightly jink, but the good thing is he's so far I have reaction time. But I mean, this is a horrible fight from my perspective, you know? This is some really dumb stuff. For me to get that fast, which makes big circles, allows him to get inside of it. Dumping the nose like that to open angles, those are, you know, terrible things. If this was a Fox 2 fight, I would have been dead a long time ago. 
Uh, but luckily we were able to outrate him. Altitude. Altitude. And slowly starting to neutralize the fight. The only thing that saved me there was speed. Again, right? I just didn't get super slow. That's the only thing. Uh, now he's slow because he spent all that energy trying to shoot at me the whole time, pulling lead, cashing in energy. Now we're on the deck and he's slow. And he's right where I want him. I will now outrate him on the deck. I'm also pretty slow, but still in a good situation here. Uh, he sees the nose come around, he jinxed. Oh, he jinxed low, and he doesn't recover. <laughs> That's one way to avoid getting killed, is to kill yourself. That works, too. <laughs> that was interesting, though. He jinxed low, I saw that, and then it looked like the aircraft stopped flying on him, and he just went right on the ground. That's unfortunate. And it's one of the reasons why you don't jink low when you have almost no altitude. So, splash one mirage. I'm kind of starting to enjoy maneuver kills. I don't know why. I used to in the past be like, oh, whatever. You know, it's not as satisfying of a kill. But there is something weirdly satisfying about driving your opponent into the ground, right? Whether it's, you know, him doing it to you or you doing it to him. Like, there is a certain, you know, satisfying aspect to that, I think. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comment section, but... I think it's pretty cool. Alright, into the merge here. This time we've actually got him two circle. Looks like he's gonna... Oh, he's gonna split us on us. That's fine. And I'm just gonna keep him in the two circle fight. Let's see what he's gonna do here. The Hornet is a fantastic dogfighter, by the way. If you uh, are looking to learn dogfighting in DCS, I highly recommend the Hornet. Very forgiving. Uh, and you know it's because it, even that's the thing if you start getting slow in the Hornet you're new you know you're pulling too hard on the stake you end up slow um, the Hornet is very forgiving at slow speeds in fact that's where it likes to be right so in that sense it can be a very good aircraft to start dogfighting in until you learn and uh, managing energy and all that stuff in a Hornet is is very very easy like I said that's how I learned so um, he doesn't want to end up in a vertical fight with me, it looks like. And I'm just going to drive to that high six, although he did manage to remove some turning room there. Luckily, I still have some speed to play with. Right, remember, we're not going to pull him into the HUD. That's HUD BFM, and that will allow him to neutralize this fight and then, you know, take it one circle and then kill me. Even here, I don't love this. He's going to become offensive on the deck, I think. If he doesn't hit a building, he hit a building. 